article courtesy of resident advisor that i thought was really interesting to check out regarding the very risky dj budgets it says how rising dj fees are reshaping the dance music economy now i wasn't too aware of how rising dj fees are disproportionately affecting the markets outside of the big global ones like places in europe and the western world in general um because i just didn't think djs would do stuff that's been kind of suggested in this article so this article suggests that there are some djs or some agencies that are essentially trying to get their clients the same fees that they would get playing in places like london in playing in places like new delhi right in places like bogota where clearly there's you know the economy isn't as good as it is here they haven't got as much disposable income or just generally they can't afford to pay the fees that djs get paid in london over there but clearly they have a lot of you know they have a really big fan base or they have um you know uh, a scene that's willing to welcome them and show them the ropes and stuff and you know they'd be one of only a few foreigners to arrive there so people would be super happy to see them i just assumed if you're a dj coming up or if you're just an established dj the opportunity to kind of spread your wings and play in kind of far-flung places would be great regardless of what they paid you because it's just an opportunity to go to places that you probably would never visit um if you weren't djing and i always kind of viewed it a little bit like fashion photographers there's this understanding out there that fashion photographers essentially get their chance to kind of show off artistically and be creative by doing editorials for magazines which they usually don't get paid for but they get a chance to shoot with different brands they get chances to shoot on interesting locations with different stylists and different creatives just a chance to kind of flex your photography muscles but then where they earn their bread and butter is usually from campaigns working with high street brands working with car companies whatever it may be that's where they actually make their actual bread and butter but they get an opportunity you to kind of work for free um or for you know to cover their fucking costs working for id or vogue and stuff they're going to take it because those things are also things that can improve your portfolio and ironically get you more corporate gigs because they see the stuff that you do so i thought dj would do the same thing you'd go play for like i don't know half of what you usually play for in a random location uh because it's a receptive crowd and because you want to just explore this weird country that you probably would never visit but then you also get the opportunity to maybe play there once or twice a year maybe even more if you do a good job but then you also get the opportunity to kind of connect with people in that local community add it to your fucking roster of place that you've been to that's kind of a win-win but then earn your real nut your real kind of money man that will come from doing all the big festivals and gigs in europe and obviously in parts of north america that would be the obvious thing to do in that regard but djs don't because i guess they just all want the money and I think this also explains to me this article because I think I've said it a few times to a few people and just something I've always kind of thought about, like especially being an up and coming DJ myself. Um, why is it that there's not an industry or there isn't a practice in DJing where the bigger DJs kind of put their arms around some up and coming ones and just bring them around just so they can kind of be a part of their kind of come up, but also to kind of help and assist them if they ever wake up one day and just aren't bothered to play. Because in my head, I'm like, oh, hold on. Imagine you're a really big DJ and you decide to take somebody on the road with you to kind of open through your sets for you. Maybe you say, you know what? I don't really like it when I go to random places and the person playing before me just playing super hard so i'm gonna give my dj who's coming with me an hour to just kind of set the room because they know what kind of vibe i like to kind of come into they come on for an hour and you kind of take over but there might be sometimes also you wake up and just hung over you don't want to play and you get the chance to your dj to play or maybe you're going to organize with a promoter to give your dj who's you're bringing along with you an opportunity to play more times regardless but the whole adage of thinking behind it was that there'd be an opportunity for the bigger person to kind of put their arm around the smaller person and kind of co-sign them via proxy of standing next to them but then of course the reality of it is most djs are greedy or selfish or just don't like sharing because it's kind of an individual sport um very rarely are you going to get them kind of offering you help or suggestions on how to get gigs and stuff it's more so you know you kind of do your own thing they kind of act like you don't exist and then once you arrive at that place that they're at suddenly now everybody's friends you see that a lot with a lot of djs all the bigger all the ones that are big and make smashing it and getting 100 to 200 gigs per year they're all pally 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 but most likely when they're all coming up there was little to no communication between them because they were all fighting for the same spots and you know maybe there's a limited amount of spots maybe i don't think so really i think mostly has to do with the fact that a lot of djs don't 
quit or move on it's probably one of the only careers in the arts or entertainment i can think of you can do until you're very very old um and usually for the most part depending on what scene you're in but especially if you're in the european scene the older you are the better it is for you you see what's happening with ricardo Villalobos and luciano they're still evergreen they still get booked everywhere across europe because they've got a rabid fan base and people in europe just seem to kind of you know um um take a lot of credence or credit or take a lot of value in somebody who is an og and pioneered the scene and being able to see them again is great they don't care if you're 50 or 21 they're still going to come and rock with you so i think that kind of creates a little bit of a bottleneck where there's not much space for people to come into but even when they do come in they want to do their own thing they don't, the last thing they want to do is be like oh preaching their hand back because they spent the majority of their time fighting for the position that they have so they have no room or no time to kind of reach their hand back and try and help somebody else which is again understandable but i think all of those things add to the overall issue and the other thing that i also mentioned i went to mention reading this article that was really illuminating was that it made me kind of understand why my idea my naive utopian idea i thought that that the dj world would change completely because of the pandemic and because of brexit was really naive my idea was or my thinking was that because of the pandemic because of brexit um and just because of people's changing habits that most likely promoters would have to try and rely on local up-and-coming people to book and to play so you'd end up with a scene where promoters and event bookers and venues are forced to book more local people like myself in an effort to keep clubs running and to kind of make sure people are still coming but then also by by default kind of educating and kind of growing um and nurturing talent you know to play for a rabid fan base of people that come to a nightclub every single weekend that'd be the great way to do it so it kind of be done because they've been forced into it or because they want to but still it'll be a net positive for everybody because you'll get a chance to cultivate a whole group and generation of up-and-coming djs and you also get the opportunity to keep you know the scene going regardless of all the big ones going away but what actually happened was that the appetite for people to go out increased way more than it was before because we were all locked away for two and a half years, maybe three. And then because of the, you know, because of the cost of rising, cost of the rising cost of living, the energy cost, clubs now are trying to make sure that they're booking the biggest people to come in so that they can guarantee ticket sales and guarantee sellouts because they can't take a risk on someone like myself playing there because they don't they can't take a risk that one person will come or 500 people will come they want to take a guarantee that 300 people would come if they book this so and so big DJs to play so they'd rather overspend and book somebody that's going to guarantee ticket sales to a certain degree then try to underspend and then risk you know maybe not making any money or even breaking even or even losing money in a night so that's the kind of things that's actually happened in reality which is a little bit unfortunate which is why at the moment still i would say the one scene in the uk specifically that's doing a really good job of kind of championing and pushing new djs and new artists has to be places like spold of course what they're doing with unfold on sundays is really good in terms of just you know promoting family and friends and people that are kind of coming up in that regard and then that kind of come that can then push on to the other night that they do where they promote people that are on their flipping in-house label or in-house resident dj roster but the other thing also i think that people are doing really well is what i describe as like the alternative scene which is kind of encompasses the lgbtq gay and queer scene all those guys and girls are doing an incredible job of promoting and pushing their own people yes they do book some big people here and there but for the most part you know nights like he she day when it was here budokai inferno um what is another one uh club verb boat and there's a few others of these kind of you know alternative kink lgbtq queer gay nights that essentially focus in on only promoting people within their community of course i'm assuming most of it has to do with just a vibe and you know comfort and just kind of getting you know knowing what people are about and stuff and whatever it may be there's other things that kind of go into the decision making of doing that but i think because they do it they, they get an opportunity to actually cultivate a whole group of djs who are able to you know hold up and entertain big events where people are coming in from all over the world all over the flipping country to come and see and they're not bored they're not turned off because they ain't seen this big glitzy dj like you know i don't know eats everything or like a blessed madonna playing they're happy to see 
see kind of local heroes playing and if anything they're probably championing them more because they know these people they see the grind they see the effort and it's something that they kind of want to get behind so i really really do love and appreciate stuff like that that they're doing um but like i said it's really harrowing really sad to kind of see the reality of what the industry is like and the fact that you know because of these rising dj fees it's negatively affecting these really smaller markets who haven't got an ability to compete as much with people on the higher up so if i scroll down quickly i'll see some of it um it kind of gives me an issue here i can kind of read out something that kind of gives you an idea of what people are speaking about i think we can maybe even start about here <clears throat> uh, this person says um in terms of the current economic situation the biggest aspect for my clients is travel it's just so expensive right now sometimes four or five times more than it's been historically this makes it difficult for clients to go outside of the scenes they're based in as we generally want to avoid big fee increases so quite often we just have to say no to international shows which again is is, is horrible because part of the beauty of dance music is the ability to see all these different people from all walks of life from all around the world um bringing their sound um to different places and having this weird kind of like mashing of sounds and scenes and inspiration and then sometimes them just playing in those places and going back and taking those learnings could affect and influence the songs or the stuff that they make creatively which would then kind of add another kind of patina and another kind of color and hue to what they're obviously doing going forward um another one says here ra spoke to an internationally dj who requested to be anonymous about her recent experiences they said we recently did a tour in australia and the flights were so expensive like double what they were before because of that we had to take on some of the shows that we wouldn't normally do to get ourselves there sometimes the better shows just pay less yep and that's what i was saying before like uh the adage or the the analogy i use of fashion photographers about they basically do the free work for magazines um and to, but to be more creative it probably gives them more life it makes them feel them more inspired but then those jobs actually then lead you to get the corporate jobs that actually pay your bills it continues here it says already the geographic disadvantages the reduced um financial muscles of bookers is a peripheral in peripheral market sorry and threatens our worldwide growth of economic music which has include introduced a laudable degree of diversity into an overwhelmingly white industry so diversity is there but then the rising cost is actually affecting the ability to you know keep that up because now you know essentially you want to get more bang for your buck you want to ensure that the people that you're booking are able to sell tickets so then you have to kind of go back to a try and true method so this is why i sometimes have sympathy for a lot of these people who were doing the whole like you know minimal very white booking policy because even back then the difficulties that existed with trying to cultivate an entirely different scene and trying to maybe bring in new voices and new sounds it was the same sort of challenges i know brexit and stuff didn't exist but the same challenges were still there as you know the fan base gonna get it is it gonna be worth the money is it gonna be worth the time um imagine if you book somebody unknown and they can't play an event here in london and then no one turns up it might actually negatively affect their confidence and their ability to get back up and dj so all these things kind of play into it they continue to said we also tried to put together a south american tour and it just wasn't working the anonymous artist said the fees that i was getting offered were just not enough to cover the cost of everything it was basically a break-even situation and again i don't blame them because if you're a dj and you are getting paid ten thousand plus to play at some random festival in europe why would you then do what i would do which was take the kind of you know the head the kind of heads and about the community and about the scene approach and basically you know do yourself a disservice by getting less money playing in a venue on in a place that you've never played in before on the market you never played at um just because you want to help the scene and community when really no one's doing that <laughs> not even the people in the local community are doing that and you're kind of you know basically for going yourself for the greater good personally i would do it because i feel like the benefit the you know long term is there but i understand why some people who have bills and children and shit and mortgages to pay are like you know what i'm gonna take the fucking 10 grand from playing at mail or something it continues says in a bit to navigate this reality while keeping their events accessible the organizations solvent and their bookings exciting some promoters just had to adapt their tactics for example by reframing offers to include unique localized benefits i love this approach it says all this had to be made me reflect more on the value of montreal offers um, touring artists and had led me to better formulate this story when engaging with ev with agents said matthew it's a win-win for artists to become known in a new market and we offer to invest in a long-term relationship to help them scale over time which is absolutely phenomenal right to have the ability to kind of 
bring somebody in that way and basically promise them, look, if you work with us, if you trust us, if you accept this reduced fee, we're going to do our best to do all these other things outside of this, essentially like an A&R and kind of grow with you as an artist, introduce you to different, you know, people, promoters, radio stations, whatever, maybe communities and little by little kind of grow you to the point where you become a really great touring artist that comes here four times a year or something, sells out 500 cap venue places and absolutely kills it um that'd be legitimately awesome and then who knows maybe the person ends up doing it so often and they end up falling over the city and moving there that's also a great way to end the story it continues here it says while well, some promoters have responded to economic fluctuations with safe conservative programming others have redoubled their efforts on growing their local underground culture um kwasam moktera co-founder and head booker here at hanois club in savage stresses the importance of cultivating local international relationship over time they said for us the best experience is to invest in strong residents which i agree with are becoming internationals while budding uh, building trust with agents he said if you constantly offer high quality events people will trust you and they they trust you they'll always follow you this has always been my adage if i when i get open my club not if when i open my own nightclub this is what i'm going to focus on obviously i'm going to book myself all the time but for the most part it'll be on building a strong core of resident djs and then having the ability to bring in some up and coming rising international acts to kind of pepper um, on top of it or to kind of add the cherry on top. That's what I would do. And of course, the random nights you can have Ellen and Ellen come in and playing, but you wouldn't rely on having those big names to keep your club afloat. You'd want to make sure or oh, I'd want to make sure Thursday to Sunday, the resident DJ is able to hold it down every single weekend because that's essentially what you get when you go to the clubs like Berkheim or even other clubs like Berlin in Berlin. Essentially, they are propped up um by the in-house resident dj teams who are able to just do what they do all the time i think of places like club division is a good place where for the most part yes there are promoters but they've got a whole roster of people that just play there on a regular basis probably like tuesday to fucking sunday and you just keep that place rocking and then if they want to for the odd times here and they get a ricardo villalobos to come and play get a fucking you know a bush a russ a john rushkin or whatever his fucking name is they'll just have a deep house guys to come in it can kind of help to kind of pepper over everything um and it continues here it says on a, on the value of local artists and kali nasimi agreed they said for years i've felt there's a huge imbalance in the scene when it comes to fees it's very often happens that circled headliners or more precisely international guests don't bring in that many extra people to the club exactly what does bring in people to club in the country are local artists and crews I definitely agree that local hero especially that person who's kind of got it from the mud who has a story to tell who everybody's seen their grind will probably have a better ability to fill up a club in the middle of fucking singapore than some random international person that not many people in that scene know because they don't have access to their stuff or they just aren't caring as much because that's something i also like i love those international scenes that you go to where they don't necessarily care about the djs that you care about they care about the ones that from play every week at their place which which is why i was kind of heartbroken when i went to nicaragua and i heard them playing like really commercial american edm and there wasn't really a local don't get me wrong maybe it was the area i was in that said that was that was the issue because i went to a really obvious touristy city like leon but it was really upsetting to hear them just playing the obvious you know um edm english records no reggaeton no nothing local to where they're from no local artists everything was kind of the same stuff you'd hear at any commercial kind of club in parts of europe or north america stuff but yeah regardless the article was really interesting i really recommend you check it out if you're interested in the economics of flipping dj um, bookings and the scene in general and how we are in the position that we're in now if you're in certain locations you think to yourself oh my god why is it the same people playing again and again and again this is part of the reason why it is like this so hopefully this um articles like this and these kind of conversations will allow people to kind of look a bit internally and kind of figure out ways to fix things so that we have a better thriving community of places and not just the same old thing that's happening now where there are certain places where it's absolutely sick to go out and everyone kind of flocks there and it kind of gets bait but then there's not enough exploration i even had to say it for myself like outside of going to georgia and going to kiev when the war ends 
there's not really big places that people are going to. Everyone's kind of going to the same three places, Berlin, Amsterdam, Kiev, um, Georgia, right? In terms of places to go to and hang, hang out. Um, but no one's really exploring the other parts of the country or even the world um, that have thriving scenes that are really doing bits because for the most part, the highlight is only in those kind of big places because that's where kind of everyone goes to play. So maybe a change will kind of help everybody to kind of broaden their horizons, myself included, myself included. 